Imagine a football match where the visitors fielded a rugby team instead of a soccer team. They claim they're just playing football as they were asked to do. The soccer team may have great individual skills and team skills, but they're going to be mauled by the rugby players. They cannot win. Relatively comfortable, so none aren't opening them up, aren't causing them any major problems. David Weir leading the attack here, Stephen Naismith. It's three on three. Naismith coming forward. Naismith takes his time, leads it across out to Kenny Miller. It's the same with honest people. They play the game according to the soccer rules, and the bad guys play it according to the rugby rules. Poor kids from ordinary families can't make it to the top unless they adopt the practices and the morality of the bad guys. How many of your workmates or your neighbours are multimillionaires? Prime Minister Key was from 1988 to 1995 Head of Foreign Exchange at Bankers Trust in Auckland and before that at Elders Merchant Finance, although the Elders timing cannot be confirmed. Elders were involved in criminal activities and created two sham foreign exchange called Forex transactions, one involving 39.5 million and the other 27 million Australian dollars in January and September of 1998. Now, elders handled the forex dealings when the money was moved from Australia to New Zealand. They had employed Key, who subsequently stated he had left the firm in 1987, before the criminal activities were devised. It appears he actually left in August 1988 to work for Bankers Trust. If Key did leave Elders in 1988, he could have been involved or exposed to the corrupt activities. If he left in 1987, he may have been implicated in the currency speculation against the New Zealand dollar, which could have destroyed the New Zealand economy. So the question, Mr. Key, is, were you with Elders or Bankers Trust on 1st of January 1988? Once that fact is substantiated, everything should fall into place. Whilst Key was employed by Bankers Trust, the U.S. management uncovered fraud in 1996 and quickly alerted federal authorities, but it was apparently known in 1994. It was pressure from senior executives, federal prosecutors said, that spawned the fraud in the first place. The Bankers Trust scheme was initiated because senior executives placed severe pressure, whatever that means, on underlings to enhance the bank's dismal performance from 1994 to 1996. The question to Mr. Key is, were you aware of the criminal practices being forced upon employees of Bankers Trust in the time period when you were employed by them? Of course not, but just for the record, please confirm it. On an even further separate matter, the sale of New Zealand Rail was something which also had its fair share of concern especially from the previous Prime Minister of New Zealand. Prime Minister Clark attacked Mr Key, saying that during the original privatisation of New Zealand Rail, he was Director of Bankers Trust, which had advised over the sale. That was the, the sale worth $400 million, and Bankers Trust pocketed $39 million Mr. Key said his performance bonuses were based on his division's work. Miss Clark said she still believed Mr. Key had benefited from the arrangement, be it indirectly or not. As a director, he would have made some money from it. In 1995, Key joined Merrill Lynch as head of foreign exchange in Singapore. That same year, he was promoted to Merrill's global head of foreign exchange based in London. 
Clearly, the management of Merrill Lynch liked him and his approach to the job. Subsequent revelations indicate Merrill Lynch, as a company, was involved in numerous activities which resulted in them being sued by clients for misrepresentation and by the authorities for criminal activities. Merrill Lynch settled with Orange County in California for a massive 400 million. The county was forced to file for bankruptcy in December 1994. In 2002, Merrill Lynch settled for 10 million as a civil penalty, the result of improper activities that took place in the New Jersey office. Merrill Lynch failed to reasonably supervise these financial advisors, whose market timing siphoned short-term profits out of mutual funds and harmed the long-term investors. Merrill Lynch were also heavily involved in the losses which created the world financial crisis in 2007 and 8, and Bank of America was forced to buy them out. Mr. Key seems statistically prone to being close to shonky and criminal financial deals. His selection of employers hardly inspires confidence in his ability to seek out and work for honest corporations. It would be useful to see how he increased his financial assets throughout his career and look at the timing of this in relation to the activities of his employers. We can now proceed to the manipulation of the New Zealand dollar in which Key's role is not clearly defined. Key was in Bankers Trust New Zealand trading rooms and Krieger was in New York. Krieger reportedly made history with his billion dollar Kiwi currency deals which caused havoc with the New Zealand Reserve Bank. There is some confusion about this however and contradictory statements abound. Krieger attacked the New Zealand dollar prompting Reserve Bank alarm that the currency would collapse. His sell orders, hundreds of million dollars at a time, meant he was able to push the Kiwi down. The Economist in the UK said Mr. Krieger was on to options early and he soon realised that the youngish option market was inefficient, not least in its failure to ensure that option prices were a fair reflection of prices on the underlying cash market. Much of his success came from his readiness to make maximum use of that inefficiency by placing huge bets. In this respect, Previously, Key proved a successful price maker, whatever that means, setting elders' prices for the Kiwi from moment to moment and attracting large flows of orders to buy and sell. He joined Bankers Trust in Auckland in 1988. Sources say Key was soon earning $1 million each year in salaries and bonuses. It would be unreasonable to think that two individuals working for the same organization would not cooperate for the benefit of themselves and that organization. Krieger continued his attack on the Kiwi. The huge flow of business from Krieger and others at Bankers Trust in New York created Key's success and income. According to Key, I don't really see it as a judgmental business. You're simply executing orders for people. It's difficult to equate such a statement and the acts which could have destroyed the New Zealand economy with someone who purports to lead New Zealand. Mr. Key has said, my life is an open book. I have nothing to hide. Good. It's up to the public to decide if the well-known quote by Abraham Lincoln has any value you can fool all the people some of the time, and some of the people all the time. But you cannot fool all the people all the time. Currently, even although the rest of the world is dying from overexposure to debt, John Key is happily borrowing everything he can, taking us further and further down the road of impoverishment 
and even higher foreign ownership. In the future, we will simply be a labor pool producing for foreign concerns, repatriating profits, making interest payments, and paying to use intellectual property. It is just a more sophisticated version of George Orwell's 1984.